South Korean food easily flourished in Indonesia along with Hollywave in the early 2000s. Of course, through Korean drama and Korean music. And the flavors of this particular popular cuisine, the Korean food, is bold, robust, and of course, definitely worth exploring. So the hype is inevitable. But a modern touch on this cuisine will spice up the trend. I'm food expert Kevin Dasumantri. Come taste the beauty only on C Indonesia. Restaurants for me is the beating heart of a city. A venue where good food and community intertwine. That is why I love exploring new places, from those hidden online ways to the glitz and glam of modern restaurants. Follow me while I'm visiting the most exciting eating places around cities on the On Sea Indonesia. I am at Kmart, one of many Korean supermarkets in Jakarta. Do you know that today it's easy to find good Korean ingredients, even great Korean restaurants in the area of the city, especially in South Jakarta and Kebayoran Baru. Like any other cities, when first Jakarta get the first exposure of Korean cuisines, it's because of the diaspora. When Korean people came to Jakarta back in the 70s or 80s, of course for the business, because at that time, the business climate was really good. And in the 1980s, the first Korean supermarket opened. Also around the area of Kebayoran Baru, which is Mugunghua. And the rest are history. But not like today, but you can find many Korean restaurants in almost every mall and every corner of the city. You can only go to two places. One is Block S and Kebayoran Baru area, which is the area that Kmart is situated. And two is Teluk Betung, the area behind Grand Hyatt Hotel and Grand Indonesia Hotel today. Hello, siang. Potato and cheese corn dog. Boleh, sini? Di ini ya? Iya. Oke. Sudah? Sudah? You know that as you can see, you can find lots of amazing Korean snacks today in Jakarta. But back then, during like 70s or even 90s, it's very hard to find this kind of Korean snacks. Because back then, uh, if you go to Korean restaurants like in Teluk Betung, in Tamrin, or in Block S, the only cuisine available are only like Korean barbecues, most of them. But today you can find this kind like topoki or odeng or any other delicious items that you can see on all the menus. It's because of the Hallyu, the Korean wave that came in the 2000s. They come with the cultures of their own, especially the music and the movies and Korean drama series. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Terima kasih banyak. Oh, you know, this is this is my corn dog. It's, you know, it's so big and. Now I understand why lots of youth in Indonesia, they really have this immense attachment to Korean food. Because there is kind of joy when you watch a movie and you eat the same food that the people from the movie eat. I remember this Korean drama that I also watch, which is Startup, which the protagonist, they sell conduct like this. But if you talk about the food of Korea, the Korean cuisine in Jakarta, today, the cuisine is also evolving, not only this fun tasting uh, snacks of, of Korean street food, but also contemporary flavors of Korean cuisine. And after this, I will take you to visit one of the pioneer of the contemporary Korean restaurant in Jakarta.
this. Hmm. This is really interesting because this dish it called for buffalo cauliflower. So if you know that buffalo is an iconic, actually one of my favorite snack. Um, this is a chicken wing originated from the um, east side of the um, America, which is in New York, in the state of Buffalo. It usually like a deep fried chicken wing that bars up with this hot sauce um, made from the Louisiana hot sauce and then the butter. It's so indulgent, it's so spicy, yet it's so sour. But actually, this hot sauce and this cauliflower, it's almost similar, like what I'm expecting. It hits me right now. But, you know what interesting is that cauliflower has this distinct sweetness when you cook it right. So actually this dish gives another layers of, of flavor that you wouldn't get in the original buffalo wings. But if I have to choose, um, one thing that I quite miss from this is the blue cheese in the dipping sauce which is something that is so unique to the original buffalo. But is this a, a great meal to, to enjoy? I would love this. I'm even kind of sweating right now because it's kind of spicy um, as any buffalo dish should be. Mm. visiting the most exciting eating places around cities only on Sea Indonesia. You know the reason why I visit Joa? Because this restaurant is perhaps the only restaurant in Jakarta that serves a new touch of contemporary Korean cuisine. I mean, look at this ambience. It is sleek. It is modern. It has this nuance of the new global Korean spirit. So I think from this this, I started to get what Joa is trying to offer because it looks so contemporary. They call it Gogi Pizza. I think it's, it stands for Pool Gogi over top of this. I think this is Bing. If you know that Korean food has Korean pancake, they call it Bing. But actually Bing not only available in Korea, so if you go to Taiwan, they have they call it Xiaoping. You go to China, they have they call it Bing, which is some kind of pancake that they use for packing that. So, oh, it sounds so crispy. So let's 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 try this. It's so full. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, this is so delicious. This is so good. It's kind of unique because the the bing or the bread is unlike the usual bing that I tasted at Korean restaurant. It's kind of more like. Indian paratha with a very fine crispiness. To see this flaky part of the bread, this is what makes it delicious. So it's not soggy, it's not chewy, it's 
it has this amazing texture because the bulgogi itself, the bulgogi, it's also tender. It's nicely marinated, it's succulent. And then in the luscious rocket leaves on top, it gives just a little bit of, of decent sharpness um, to balance the overall meal. Oh, so good, so good. Afternoon, so Kevin. Oh, afternoon. So, oh, look at that. your galbi. Ah, smells delectable. Serve you with our selection of banchan. The selection of banchan. You got this apple samyang. Ah, samyang. Then, uh, it's, it's better to serve it with mushroom rice. With the mushroom rice, yeah. yeah. This, this, the aroma is just tantalizing. Yeah. Thank you so okay. much. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, where do I start? Because I think Joa is very generous here. Since usually when you go to Korean restaurants, a galbi, they serve it kind of thin. But look at Joa's galbi, it's, it's humongous, it's monstrous, it's so big, it's so thick, it's, it's smell divine. So I think I'm gonna try with the paria leaf and then I'm gonna, going to put the kimchi, definitely, over the top of the paria and then the... Um, oh, I think this is a very nice short ribs because it's fatty, it's indulgence here and let's try with the samgyang or this kind of sauce mixed with apple and start with okay another one <laughs> this is the art of eating at a Korean restaurant because the banchan is only like five items but in a traditional Korean restaurants they will serve you a dozen of banchan and you will get confused like where do I have to start but let's begin with this Oh, I can't wait. Mm. The meat is really good. The sweetness that is distinct to, to galbi, you can taste here distinctively. But you know, it's one of the most interesting facts about this kind of method of eating in a Korean restaurant that we call Sam, which is S-S-A-M where you put like a lot of vegetables on top is actually originated um, during the ancient uh, period, during the Buddhism era. So if you go to Los Angeles and you will find lots of great restaurants uh, of Korean cuisine, it's because there are lots of Korean immigrants that reside in LA. And that's why the culture of Korean food in Los Angeles is so vibrant and it's almost as authentic as you are eating in any part of South Korea. And this particular kalbi, it's so popular there because the size of it, it's, it's American size, it's big, it's, it's chunk. In the global stage, like recently, like perhaps five to ten years, there are lots of new movement of Korean cuisine that emerge in every great city around the world, from New York to Los Angeles, to Tokyo, even in Jakarta. You will find the food of Korea starting to reimagine itself into a more exciting new kinds of vibrant cuisine that they merge with other kinds of cuisine, which is like, like Korea with Japanese and Korea with French. Like some of the best restaurants in America, like Momofuku, it is inspired by the Korean influence also. Jungsik in New York, it is like a French Korean contemporary. So you'll find lots of new Korean movement anywhere around the globe. Like here, Joa in Jakarta, they serve a new touch of modern food. Even in South Korea itself, the movement of new Korean cuisine is barely new. Perhaps it's only like 15 to 10 years of age. And that is why it's also recently new uh, discovery anywhere around the gastronomic world around the globe. What a fulfilling three meals that I just finished in Joa. But I'm starting to understand what they offer, which is a combination of Korean food with this modernity of American touch. And after this, I'm going to talk with the chef that's behind all of this wonderful creation. 
Chef, I've just tasted the cauliflower buffalo. Yes. And the gogi pizza, the bulgogi pizza. They both yes. are amazing. What is the concept of food at Joa? I draw uh, like a melting uh, pot cities like mm. around the world, like in New York and uh, Seoul, uh, Hong Kong, Bali, even Jakarta. Yeah. So the concept is, is uh, a new Korean American, right? We're trying to bring a dining experience yeah. uh, in Jakarta yeah. with, a, with a new concept. So yeah, we come up with a new Korean American, so we're trying to bring, you know, uh, and a different kind of a different kind of a concept, you know, like in LA they have a K Town, so we're trying to bring it here, <laughs> bring right? The K Town to J Town. Yeah, <laughs> K Town to J Town basically. Yeah. K Town to J Town. Yeah. Because because the flavor it's it's really unique. I mean I, I love Korean food, but yeah. I cannot find any kind of flavor profile yeah. that the food that I just tasted like that anywhere in Jakarta except in Choa. Okay. I mean I mean it's 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 kind of playful, it's it's it's, it's very daring with the local flavor. Yeah. But how's the crowd? Like cauliflower is basically is uh, I think from the uh, buffalo wings. This is very <laughs> famous in uh, America, right? Yeah. So it's over there they serve it with the uh, you know the buffalo sauce with the blue cheese sauce as yes. for dipping and the celery stick and uh, yes. So I'm trying to create uh, other buffalo wings. So I instead of uh, uh, chicken wings, yeah. I use uh, cauliflower. Yeah. And instead of uh, blue cheese, yeah. I use uh, maybe yogurt because I mean uh, blue cheese is still very you know. Yeah, it is kind of off for the local flavor yeah. but for me this, it was really good okay. it was really good thank it was you, like, well, you, it's, I miss the blue cheese definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too yeah right but okay it's, it's, it's something good yeah I, I read about the Jati Louis rice yes that on the milk way what is that, the cocktail? Why bother using the local ingredients? We work with a bartender from Bali, right? Mm. And then, you know, there's, there's a sense that we trying to use local ingredients. Mm. Uh, I mean, a lot of good rice from uh, outside the country also, like yeah. Thailand or yeah. Philippines, they also yeah. like, you know, uh, Jap even Japan, Japan yeah. right? you know, they have a good rice, but... Yeah. Uh, Jati Lui is, is, is like it's in, in Taban and uh, Philis, right? So, yeah. very uh, uh, good quality of rice. Yeah. Also, we're trying to bring the sense that it's still under, uh, I mean, on UNESCO program, right? The yes, heritage. yeah. So, Jati Lui is, is, is under the UNESCO he under heritage yeah. field, right? Yeah. I mean, your was very really interesting. But, Barito, how the market responded? As for now, I mean, the, the concept, uh, they take it, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. Interesting. Yeah. They take it, you know, very, very, very positive, right? Mm. But it's, there's, there's always, you know, like uh, they always trying to make a comparison with the, with the authentic one. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's not authentic, it's Korean, but I mean, it's, it's always on and on, right? Yeah, it's like yeah, it's authentic, always. and we're trying to, you know, create a new concept. There's yeah. always a comparison. Yeah. So, I, I, I do agree. Like, as a chef, your job is actually to discover the new things um, while still giving respect to the old flavor. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. You yeah. have lots of things to do? No, no, yeah? it's still good. It's okay. still under control. It's still under control. <laughs> Get it. Music. visiting the most exciting eating places around cities on the on sea Indonesia.
siang Kak Kevin. Siang, halo. Ini ada kita ada uh, signature cocktail The Milky Way. Ya. Yeah. Oh, oh oke. Okay. Namanya kita Milky Way. Yeah. Jadi base-nya itu jadi Louis Rice Milk from Bali. Terus ada honey ginger syrup sama ada salt dan sournya kita pakai lime. Oh, love it. Perfect. Udah pernah coba sebelumnya tak? Heaven, belum pernah. Belum pernah. This is the first time. Oh. Pertama kali. Thank you. Okay, Terima kasih banyak. Sama-sama. Look at this. This is a a pasta, um, which is a, a parpadelle. It's kind of interesting that Joa they have this influence not only American but Italian cuisine repertoire inside of the menu. Hmm. The flavor is kind of interesting because I think they use seaweed inside of this pasta, so it's there's umami and the prawn is very sweet. Which is really good. It shows that the prawn is cooked perfectly and so nice and fresh. And they have this zucchini inside. It's almost like classic Italian, but with a touch of spiciness and, and umaminess that is very distinct to Korean flavor. But actually, I'm very intrigued with this. This is that they call as the Milky Way. If you see that this Milky Way is made with soju, homemade jati louis rice milk, and then ginger and salt. So let's let's try this. Oh, it's, it's really good. That's so refreshing. You know that in Korean cuisine, they have this alcohol that they call as makoli. Makoli is a type of drink or liquor that made with fermented rice. Because as we all know, the culture in the eastern side of Asia, like China, Korea and Japan, their craftsmanship with fermenting rice, like rice wine. Uh, and any kind of rice fermentation and this is very nice because it's complementing this this pasta that is kind of spicy the prawn is actually marinated with the gochugaru which is dried chili pepper like that they put in almost kinds of spicy korean food the gochugaru is kind of similar if you go to Japanese restaurant, you ask for togarashi. It's almost similar, but gochugaru has this the depthness, more robust in flavor compared to the other kinds of uh, dry chili. And also, the flavor of the umaminess that they use perhaps with sesame is very distinct to Korean cuisine repertoire. Joa is truly a restaurant filled with excitement on their menus. And as a diner, I will be very pleased to taste a modern touch of a kind of cuisine that is now being glorified anywhere in Jakarta, which is Korean food. Come, taste the beauty only on Sea Indonesia.